Thank you so much, Ami. Uh, we mentioned in our background or for this session that several factors continue to challenge the corn industry, uh, which include, of course, the climate change, the volatility of corn prices in the market, and there is also the threat of the fall armyworm. Uh, now, the African swine flu and even the avi avian flu may also have an effect to the corn industry as the poultry and livestock are among the major users of corn. Now, to give us the current status of the corn industry, considering these challenges, and of course, in the context of the pandemic, we are fortunate to have here the National Corn Program of the Department of Agriculture. Dr. Candido Damo is the, its technical consultant. Uh, prior to his work in the program, he had 32 years of experience as a researcher and chief of technical assistance division of the Cotton Development Authority. He also brings with him technical expertise on cassava, where he was exposed in various trainings abroad. Doc Damo earned his agriculture degree from Mariano State, uh, Mariano Marcos State University in Ilocos Norte, and his master's and doctoral degree in agronomy from UP Los Baños. I am now giving Doc Damo. Thank you very much, PJ, for that uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon uh, to all uh, participants of this uh, webinar and also uh, staff of the Grow Asia and uh, other uh, allied uh, companies. Uh, and uh, in the, this afternoon, uh, I would like to present uh, to the uh, group the status of the Philippine corn industry. Uh, under the National Corn Program, we have three crops under this uh, program, the corn, cassava, and sorghum. Next slide, please. But uh, I will focus more on uh, the discussion on the corn. Then uh, the, uh, our corn industry shares 5.76% uh, of the gross value added and uh, with the value of 43 billion pesos. We have a physical area of 1.25 million hectares with a 1.13 million uh, farmers. The uh, farm gate price uh, last year, 2019, for the yellow was, uh, sorry, uh, it was, uh, Covered 13 pesos and 7 centavos per kilo. And while for the white corn, it's uh, uh, 12 pesos and 95 centavos per kilo. And the uh, uh, average production cost per kilo uh, for yellow is uh, 10, uh, 10 pesos and 56 centavos. And for white corn, uh, it was uh, 8 pesos and 72 uh, centavos. And uh, below are the different uh, uses of uh, our corn. Majority of our corn production in our country goes to the uh, processing of animal feeds. Uh, comprises about 76% and 19% for the staple. And uh, for the other uh, uh, industrial uses, the uh, Production of syrup, starts, oil, and flour. Next slide, please. This is the historical uh, production of our uh, corn uh, for the last 10 years. So this is a combination of uh, yellow and white. So if you notice uh, on the uh, bar graph, uh, last year, 2019, uh, it was the best a year for uh, our corn uh, production in our country. Uh, it, re uh, it reaches to 7.98 million metric tons. On the uh, yellow line, uh, which uh, represents the average uh, yield per hectare, uh, there, uh, if you notice, there is a uh, gradual increase on the uh, uh, yields of our corn. So, the, the average for both yellow and white uh, uh, was 3.17 uh, tons per hectare. 
But if you notice on the uh, uh, orange line, uh, that represents the area harvested. So uh, the area harvested for 2019 was uh, 2.52 million metric uh, million hectares, I should say. So uh, in here, if you notice, there's there's no such a uh, significant increase or uh, changes on the area harvested for our corn for the last 10 years. So if you uh, get the average for uh, our production uh, and the uh, we have a 2.64 percent uh, increase annually then for uh, the yield uh, we have 2.49 percent but for the area it's only 0.1 percent so again uh, there's no significant changes on the area uh, harvested with corn Next slide, please. This is now the aggregation between yellow and white. So if you notice, the uh, blue line represents the uh, total production of yellow in our country. So 2019 uh, was the best uh, production of uh, our yellow. Uh, it reaches to 5.91 million metric tons. But uh, for uh, the uh, other shield, which is the yellow line, we only achieved 4.17 tons per hectare. But for the area, uh, we, we harvested 1.42 million hectares for our yellow. So uh, through the years, uh, there, uh, there are changes actually uh, on the uh, production of our yellow, uh, yellow corn. And this was uh, affected by several uh, uh, several uh, uh, events, just like the, uh, the typhoon, uh, just like drought, and also uh, the uh, uh, area planted by our farmers. Next slide, please. For our uh, for our white corn, the uh, the trend is. Uh, Sino, uh, different with that of our of our yellow. If you notice, uh, the uh, production of uh, white corn last year uh, decreased. Then uh, for the other uh, for the area planted, there's also a decrease in the area harvested of our white corn, and also uh, there is a uh, in insignificant increase on the yield, which is 1.88 uh, uh, tons per hectare. So uh, if you compare uh, our data from uh, our data in, uh, ye in uh, yellow and white, uh, in, our, in, in, in the production of yellow corn, there is an increase on the area harvested. But for uh, white, there is a decrease on the area harvested. So some of the areas devoted to white uh, 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 for the previous years uh, were planted to uh, yellow. Uh, why? Because uh, our yellow corn yeah, is a hybrid corn and the uh, farmers got a uh, higher uh, yields compared with our uh, white corn, which is most of our varieties are open pollinated varieties. Next slide, please. This slide represents the uh, top five uh, producing regions. Uh, from the uh, top five producing regions comprises 74.9% 74 74 of the production of corn with that of the total production came from these five regions. So dito nanggagaling yung malaking bulyong ng maize natin. This is a both yellow and white. So the uh, first region contributed the uh, 23% is Cagayan Valley, followed by Northern Mindanao, followed by Barm and Soxabgen and Ilocos region. Next slide, please. 
Again, this is for the aggregation of uh, yellow and white. Uh, for uh, the top five regions uh, producing uh, yellow, uh, Cagayan Valley is number one, followed by Soxabian, followed by Northern Mindanao, followed by Barn, and followed by Ilocos region. So uh, these are the top five producing regions uh, producing yellow corn. But for the white corn, uh, the first uh, uh, produ uh, top producing region is uh, Barn, followed by Northern Mindanao, followed by Soxabian, Davao region, and Sambuanga Peninsula. Next slide, please. For the top five corn producing provinces, this is uh, both yellow and white. First is Isabela, comprises 14% or contributed 14%. Uh, Bukidnon uh, contributed uh, 11%. Maguindanao, 8%. Cagayan, 6%. Lanao del Sur, 6%. And the rest, uh, regions, uh, contributed 55%. So from the top five uh, producing uh, provinces, uh, about 45% of the total production uh, were harvested in these uh, five provinces. Next slide, please. For the... Uh, Top five producing provinces for yellow. Uh, the, uh, the top uh, province uh, producing yellow is Isabela, contributed uh, 19%. Next is uh, Bukidnon, followed by Cagayan, Maguindanao, South Cotabato, and uh, other regions contributed, uh, for, uh, other provinces, I should say, contributed 47%. For the white, it's Lanao del Sur, uh, contributed 14%. Then, uh, see, it was uh, Lanao del Sur, contributed 14%. Lanao del Norte, 11%. Maguindanao, 10%. Bukidnon. Uh, 7% and Sambuanga del Sur, 6%. These are the top uh, five provinces producing yellow and white corn in our country. Next slide, please. For our performance uh, this first semester of 2020, uh, uh, please adjust the Oh, no. Please adjust the uh, okay for the first semester. Uh, I will use now. I will use my uh, uh, código in here for the first quarter. Uh, the uh, blue bar represents the uh, performance of uh, corn in. Uh, 2019, while the orange one represents the 2020 uh, production. For uh, the first quarter, uh, we incurred about 5.3% uh, negative. So uh, we have a lower production of uh, both yellow and white. This is a combined uh, yellow and white. Uh, if we compare our production last year or 2019, but for uh, the second semester, second quarter, uh, we have a 15.4 percent increase of positive. Uh, if we compare our performance in 2019 or last year, for the first semester, we we have a positive growth of 1.4% and the production of corn uh, repre uh, uh, represents 3.6 million metric tons compared with 2019. What are the causes of uh, the uh, uh, 
decline on the production in the first quarter of 2021. There was a flooding of uh, uh, corn areas along the river banks in Cagayan and in Sabana. Then there was also a uh, drought uh, in Region 2 and also uh, there, uh, there is also a uh, damage on our corn and the uh, eruption of Taal Volcano during the early uh, months of this year. Then uh, there is also a, uh, six, uh, there is also a uh, uh, yield losses as uh, affected by the incidence of all armyworm in our country. Next slide, please. These are the uh, industry challenges. First, low yield and corn. The white corn, the average uh, yield last year was only 1.88 metric tons per hectare. For the yellow, it's only uh, 4.17 metric tons per hectare. So if we compare these uh, yields or actual product, uh, uh, yields of the white and yellow, uh, it is far below than the potential yields of our corn varieties available in our country. Another one is high cost of production. So we know that uh, there is also an increase on the uh, prices of farm inputs and even labor in our country. Then vulnerability to calamities. As I mentioned that uh, there are also incidences of floods, drought uh, damages, and also damages due to emerging pests and diseases. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, na the uh, number one uh, pest in uh, insect pest uh, nowadays for corn is all army work. Low income of farmers. So with the uh, average yield of uh, 1.88 uh, or 3.17, uh, both yellow and white, then uh, we have a, a low a, a net income of our corn farmers. Then quality of produce, again, uh, uh, some of our uh, uh, stakeholders, especially the uh, feed millers, they are uh, uh, giving us feedbacks that uh, our uh, corn in our country has a very low quality. Then uh, low adoption of technology, uh, why? Because of uh, the uh, limited uh, technical know-how of our, of our corn farmers and uh, especially the uh, capital of our farmers. So they cannot uh, uh, apply the required na uh, amount of uh, fertilizers uh, to, our, to their corn uh, plants. Next slide, please. Opportunities, high yielding varieties. As I mentioned, uh, we have several uh, uh, corn varieties with high yield potentials. Then uh, farm mechanization, uh, machineries, farm machineries, uh, post harvest equipment and facilities are uh, available uh, in our country. Then uh, there is also a uh, uh, potential of uh, corn livestock integration. In here, we want that corn farmers will process their uh, corn and uh, uh, include the livestock or poultry, uh, poultry in their uh, uh, farming system. Then production or area expansion. So again, there are uh, areas, idle areas that are uh, potential for expansion and the production of our corn. Then private sector investment. Uh, some, um, most uh, private sector are willing to invest uh, on the whole value chain, uh, production up to marketing. Then market potentials, of course, there is an increasing demand of our corn uh, in the different uh, sectors, uh, just like for, uh, for production of feeds, uh, oil, 
production of oil, starch, flour, syrup. And also, there is a, a potential for export, uh, both grain and silage. Next slide, please. These are the major uh, stakeholders of our corn industry. So next slide. This is the program goal. Uh, transform farmers to be productive and profitable entre agripreneurs by adapting the strategies under the plan, plan, plan program of the Department of Agriculture. Next slide, please. We have uh, these uh, general strategies, survive, remove, grow. So uh, this is in time with uh, the uh, uh, pandemic. Next slide. These are the trust and priorities under the survive. Enhance production of corn for food and feeds. Integrate corn with livestock, poultry, and high value crops. Mainstream climate resiliency by adjusting planting dates in disaster risk areas to reduce damages. Ensure availability of high yielding varieties with resistance or tolerance to drought, pests, and diseases. Promote the consumption of corn grains, uh, either pure or blended with rice as a stable food. Next slide, please. Under the uh, reboot, uh, first is we will uh, modernize production and post-production activities. And these are the uh, activities of the uh, program. Distribution of high yielding and pest resistant varieties. Provision of fertilizers and soil ameliorants. Ensure availability of reserves and buffer stock of corn seeds and pesticides. Capacitate uh, farmers through, uh, through conduct of trainings, establishment of technology demos, demonstrations and uh, model farms. Provision of farm machineries and post harvest, processing equipment and facilities. Development and commercialization of appropriate technologies. Irrigation of crops by providing pumps and engine sets for shallow tube well and open source. Next slide. Next up, second is promote industrialization of the sector. Promote the processing and marketing of corn by products within the cluster. Support the rice corn blend project. Conduct of entrepreneurial and livelihood trainings provision of post-harvest processing equipment and facilities. Next slide, please. Another one under the report is develop export markets. So uh, the program supports the production of quality corn products, primary and byproducts for export markets. That's, uh, for example, the corn silage, corn grains, processed feeds, and processed food. Next slide, please. Next is adapt, enhance farm clustering and consolidation. Provide support for institutional development of clusters. Engage the services of professional managers. Implement the no cluster, no assistance policy. Next slide, please. Another one is beef up infrastructure development. So construction of more farm to market roads leading to corn production areas, construction of post harvest and processing facilities, just like multi-crop drying pavement, mechanical dryer, storage or silos, corn grids processing center. Then construction of small scale irrigation projects such as solar powered irrigation system and spring development. Next, please. Next is the uh, 
program proposed or work for higher budgetary support. For 2021, a total budget of 6.63 billion was proposed for the national core program. This is 353% higher from the 2020 GAA. But uh, I would like to inform to the group, the group that uh, we have uh, 1.49 billion uh, included under the uh, net or net expenditure uh, budget. Then higher budget to be proposed in 2022 and beyond. Support legislative measures for the corn industry. Uh, there is a, uh, a bill uh, for the uh, creation of the uh, Philippine Corn Research Institute. Then pursue roadmap development. So there's an ongoing uh, uh, revision on the uh, corn, cassava, and sorghum roadmap uh, spearheaded by the planning and monitoring service. Next slide, please. For the uh, trust and priorities and grow, partnership with private or business sector, LGUs and other agencies for the development of feed and food logistics, infrastructure, marketing facilities, such as, but not limited to the following. Uh, these are uh, projects uh, uh, collaborated by uh, the uh, corn program with uh, the private sector. Uh, the, the BIGMA project, the uh, corn avocado uh, integration uh, production, then uh, establishment of the edu farms and FAO learning centers with uh, Corteva, white corn production and grape processing with LDU to Maluini Isabela, corn livestock integration with LDU at Chage, and uh, Isabella State University and Agri Component and Tagayan Valley Cooperative. Next slide, please. This, this table shows the uh, sectoral commitment. So for uh, the production, uh, uh, the uh, uh, target for uh, 2020, is uh, 8.2 million metric tons. But for the target um, 2021, 8.64 uh, uh, million metric tons. Then uh, also there's a corresponding uh, increase in the area and also the yields. Next slide, please. Doc, Doc Damo, excuse me for... Yes, sir. Yes, just concern with the time lang po na um, you okay, make up okay. po, yes, in two minutes po. Okay, Thanks, okay. Doc. So, only, uh, three slides now. But for the uh, yellow, again, uh, our target for 2021, because we have already set the 2020 targets for the production of yellow, 6 million uh, metric tons. For the area, 1.3 million. For the yields, uh, it will be 4.3 35 tons per hectare. For the white, 2.6 million. For uh, the area, 1.2. And for the yields, 2.1 uh, tons per, uh, per hectare. Next slide, please. This is one of the uh, uh, cons uh, issues and concerns on uh, corn, uh, falling prices of corn. This is a historical uh, uh, observations uh, during the peak of harvesting. So, uh, ano, ano ba ang ginawa ng uh, corn program? Uh, we, we have, uh, we linked uh, the corn clusters to processors, specifically the Philippine Association of Feed Millers or PAFMI that represents about 70% of the country's uh, millers. Then uh, we uh, requested uh, some of the provincial local government units to directly uh, procure the produce of our farmers. Then uh, policy and calibrated importation of yellow corn and feed wheat during the peak of harvesting period. 
So the peak of harvesting period of corn uh, was September to October and March to April. Then waste forward establishment of corn processing facilities in three strategic areas, four uh, including under the proposed additional Bayanihan stimulus package, encourage the private sector to invest more on post harvest and logistics uh, that are needed to ensure stable grain supply. Then initiate exportation of corn grains. Next slide, please. For the uh, incidence of uh, fall army work, uh, uh, these are the uh, uh, activities that uh, the core program and other uh, agencies uh, uh, implemented. Uh, we have the uh, national and regional task force were established to plan and monitor the uh, uh, proper implementation of the FAW money, uh, management protocol, contact information campaigns and FAW in the different regions through the Regional Crop Protection Center, regular monitoring and incidence and damage rating in corn production in the different regions through the RCPC, distributed biological control agents, pesticides and pheromone lures to corn farmers through RCPC, conducted FAW management trainings uh, through the Bureau of Plant Industry and participated uh, from by the representatives of local government units, RCPCs, and regional corn coordinators in the different regions, and coordinated closely with the National Crop Protection Center, uh, private sector, and other corn stakeholders in the management of FAW. I, I think that's all for my presentation, and uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you so much, po, uh, Doc Damo, for that comprehensive presentation of the current situation of the corn industry and, of course, the initiatives of the government in making sure uh, that corn sector is not neglected. All right. Uh, we're now going to ask Doc Damo some of your questions for uh, his presentation. And if some of you have questions, still have questions, you may use the Q&A box to uh, type them in. Okay, um, Doc Damo, uh, there is one question here. Um, okay. The question is, was there a change in the demand and prices as a result of the drop in swine production due to ASF? Uh, actually, uh, when we uh, uh, had the meeting with uh, the feed millers, uh, they... They're, they're not telling to us that there is a reduction on the, on the demand of feeds, uh, yet they're still maintaining the, uh, their uh, demand on, the, uh, on corn and even our cassava. So it means that uh, there is no a uh, significant reduction on the demand of feeds in our country uh, caused by ASF. And in terms of prices, Doc? There is there a... of corn? Yes, but... actually, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, last month and uh, this month, uh, there are uh, farmers uh, giving us feedback that there is a uh, decrease on the price uh, because uh, September, October, uh, these are the peak months of our harvest uh, season. So. Uh, historically, uh, nangyayari talaga ang uh, reduction ng, uh, ng prices. But uh, based on our monitoring, uh, when we say it is a dry uh, dry grain, uh, hindi ito yung basa. Kasi yung basa, sinasabi nila uh, 9 to 10 pesos or 8 to 10 pesos ang uh, wet uh, grain. But uh, for the dry, dry, uh, dry grain, uh, nasa... Uh, 12 to 14 naman yung uh, namumonitor namin na uh, presyo ng mais natin sa Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. And Doc Damo, there's another question here. Um, how about the demand due to the COVID situation? Was there any reduction in the demand? Well, uh, katatapos lang yung uh, meeting uh, with uh, DTI uh, about the logistics. Actually, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, wala namang uh, there's no significant uh, reduction on the demand uh, because of the COVID. Actually, uh, uh, the the issue in here of our uh, 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 traders, uh, it is more on the issue on the logistics. Uh, uh, yung uh, nalaman namin sa mga uh, suppliers ng raw materials to feed millers, uh, yung paiba-iba na requirements ng mga uh, LGUs natin na din dinadaanan ng uh, trucks nila. So, mm -hmm. nadidelay lang yung ano, nadidelay lang yung uh, yung delivery nila but uh, as to the volume uh, well, hindi naman nila sinasabi na nagbago yung order o yung volume ng uh, mga feed millers na ino-order sa kanila. Mm -hmm. And then we have doc a uh, last question po for from our participants. Uh, the question is what is your uh, what is our sufficiency index uh, with uh, in terms of yellow corn uh, production in the Philippines. Yeah. Actually uh, uh, we presented this uh, uh, during the month of, and uh, uh, about uh, when we uh, have a uh, estimate on the second semester kasi uh, we don't have yet the uh, final data from the uh, Philippine Statistics uh, Authority, the uh, second semester, but we have only the first sem. And uh, also, uh, uh, we, we base this on the uh, uh, targets of our regions. Uh, if uh, third and fourth quarters will be achieved, then we'll be having a 98% sufficiency for yellow corn. All right, Doc. Uh, thank you so much, Doc, for uh, for your responses. I think there are still questions in the Q and A box that you may want to uh, answer or type your answers uh, or your okay. responses. So, okay. yeah, because of time, we may we, we may not uh, answer them live here. Yes. And yeah, thank you so much, po, Doc, for uh, for the presentation and for the responses. Welcome. Yes. Okay, uh, before we start with the second part of this session, we have a few reminders for our speakers and for our participants. Uh, for our succeeding speakers, your time allotment is only five to seven minutes. And after the presentations, we will proceed with a, a Q&A. So if you have any questions, kindly type them in the Q&A box and we'll request our speakers to respond to them during our moderated discussions. And your mic is still on mute, but we will give you permission to speak during the open forum. Uh, just raise your hand virtually using the Zoom function uh, located beside the Q&A box. Okay, um, at this point, we will proceed with the presentations on insights, um, initiatives, and uh, experience relating to strengthening the corn industry and, of course, helping smallholder farmers in increasing their productivity and profitability. Uh, our first speaker is currently the risk management and sourcing lead of Cargill Animal Nutrition and Health under the Merchants and Formulations Nutritionist team. Prior to joining Cargill, Jason worked for Nestle Philippines for almost 11 years, uh, bringing, bringing him, uh, bringing out him wi with wide range of experience from finance, procurement, and supply chain. Over to you, Jason. Thank you for that introduction. Okay, of course, uh, I will be uh, speaking the, the uh, skipping the, the outlook part. Uh, I'll be focusing on at least uh, as an end user processor, uh, our perceived uh, uh, opportunities in relation to the challenges uh, we face uh, on the local uh, corn sector. So of course, yung outlook na ko um, napasadahan na ni Doc Damo and uh, uh, we think is the subject matter expert on uh, outlook related to crop. So moving to my next slide. On discussion outline, uh, I have a couple of slides uh, to to uh, again reinforce the how important uh, corn is in the feed industry. And then um, as an end user. Uh, this was part of the campaign uh, done by RDA is uh, at least give everyone an overview what really is our uh, buying process and our 
uh, the, the acceptance parameter in relation to uh, the corn we procure. And of course, um, third would be our challenges, uh, the challenges we face uh, on the local corn, given meron tayong uh, survive, uh, reboot, and grow. So these are uh, inputs as well we bring into the table, which uh, uh, the stakeholders can can put into consideration when they uh, formulate the medium to long term strategy for local corn. And of course, our proposed uh, recommendation. Uh, these are all, if ever, uh, uh, proposals. Of course, it's subject to your feedback and uh, scrutiny uh, later on. So on my next slide, uh, again, Dr. Damo gave uh, a very detailed breakdown of uh, uh, the domestic corn situation here. But uh, bottom line, um, it's next to rice. It's the uh, most important crop in the Philippines, yung white corn. Uh, which is generally ito yung pang staple food na din. Uh, they're saying uh, one out of five Filipinos uh, consume this uh, corn and uh, it's our ambition to, to make this even higher. Uh, and then uh, the yellow corn, uh, which is uh, uh, the most important local ingredient, uh, I would say, uh, for the feed uh, sector naman. And of course, on the context of uh, nutrition, uh, for uh, everyone's appreciation, uh, this, uh, the, the yellow corn, uh, it's 30% uh, protein. Uh, and of course, the majority, it's 60% uh, uh, um, energy uh, on the context of uh, nutrition contribution. So, ganun siya ka, ka, uh, very important sa ating uh, feed uh, production. And of course, the Philippines, uh, it's uh, very important for poultry production, swine production, and uh, to some extent, yung other species, ito yung ruminants, uh, which we call ruminants, the likes of uh, uh, beef and uh, uh, goats, uh, most likely, plus a portion of aqua. And then on my next slide, of course, si nawala yung uh, pie distribution. But of course, si Doc Damo oh, nagbigay naman ng uh, breakdown on uh, where the uh, corn is being used. So majority of which, uh, just to reinforce, um, a minimum of 60%, it's being uh, used on uh, feeds. And uh, if uh, we will extrapolate on the per species, uh, breakdown. So majority are really poultry. Uh, this was 2019 extrapolation. Swine would be around 44% and 2% would be for other species. So uh, may question kung ano yung impact ng ASF. So most likely po uh, significant kasi uh, again, uh, swine uh, it's uh, our extrapolation. 44% of the corn uh, goes to the swine uh, uh, segment. So, nung uh, nagkaroon ng ASF uh, and then uh, second wave, the, the, there was a resurgence a couple of months ago, um, impacting significant portion of Luzon and Mindanao. So, this uh, in a way would impact uh, the consumption of uh, uh, local yellow corn. And then on uh, the next slide. Uh, in table format lang po ito, uh, but of course, si Dr. Mo uh, earlier uh, gave us a, a pie chart uh, representation. On the right, uh, yung table, uh, pinakita lang namin in numerical um, how important each uh, regions are in relation to uh, the corn production. However, uh, may caveat, if you will ask us, um, Saan naman dito yung uh, critical in relation to uh, what's acceptable uh, for Cargill. So majority of what we buy uh, are not really from Region 2 but from uh, Region 1 mainly because of uh, our quality uh, requirement. And then if um, you're interested, um, saan ba present si Cargill? So basically yung... Uh, uh, green dots dyan are uh, Cargill plants and of course uh, we also in uh, we are also in partner with uh, tall mill plants so basically it's nationwide and we we have a big 
uh, production in uh, uh, Bulacan area, and then the rest are scattered uh, across the uh, the country. And then um, on my next slide, uh, pakita ko lang yung acceptance parameter natin since um, uh, we're here to uh, improve. Uh, of course, our ambition is to improve uh, local corn production, but might as well uh, uh, look at uh, ways to improve uh, quality uh, because uh, as end user, again, uh, quantity is one uh, part, but quality is equally important. So um, you can see here, sabi, um, generally, uh, when we buy corn, uh, we look at moisture, we look at damaged grains, we look at the percentage of impurities. Uh, molds is something we also look at. Uh, and of course, the percentage of spoil, spoiled grains. Nilaktawan ko yung aflatoxin because uh, afla, uh, this is something I would say Cargill uh, specific requirement uh, well, prior to us allowing uh, a delivery of corn uh, to be in our uh, production. So, bago kami uh, mag-accept ng delivery per truck po, uh, we, we assess the aflatoxin uh, level, which um, shouldn't go beyond uh, 100 parts per billion on uh, uh, to some uh, extent. Pero um, ang acceptance lang po namin, generally grade 1, grade 2, and then yung grade 3, grade 4, it's something we uh, we only accommodate kung talagang yung supply eh, uh, we're forced to good uh, to accept this uh, uh, quality of corn inferior quality of corn I would say and then um, uh, other than uh, the mycotoxin level, the aflatoxin um, we also look at uh, yung material uh, handling uh, safety aspects so we don't allow uh, the use of fertilizer sack. We also don't allow um, deliveries to be to go beyond 55 kilos. And of course, uh, we also look at uh, uh, our supplier pool, be it traders, be it, be it co-ops co or processors to really comply on uh, RA8794 or the um, Anti-Overloading Act. And then on uh, the next slide with those... Um, uh, at least uh, you having an appreciation what's our uh, quality requirement on the material. Uh, we also would like to share um, at least our pool uh, of uh, suppliers and in relation to the volume we're able to source. So uh, majority of uh, our volumes are still uh, trader uh, related. Uh, and then um, second, 38% would be coming from cooperatives and then a small portion would be uh, from 8% uh, uh, from those we call processors. So sila yung mga processors, uh, it's just a, a, a Cargill term probably. Uh, we use this term to uh, those entities having um, uh, drying facilities. So they're not really uh, a buyer and sellers of... Uh, uh, POs, I would say, pero sila merong uh, significant um, uh, equipments. Uh, they, they, it's, they're the type of suppliers who can influence uh, quality, so on and so forth. Of course, uh, I wouldn't say this is the desired state. Our ambition is that, uh, syempre, uh, sabi nga kanina ni Dr. Tamo, um, they wanted to link uh, uh, farmers to end users, the growers to uh, the feed millers uh, through PAFME uh, last year. But uh, again, um, we wanted to have a pool wherein uh, we're dealing uh, um, majority with farmers and then co-ops and of course uh, processors. On the next slide, uh, with uh, that in mind, um, we also wanted to give uh, the stakeholders an overview of uh, how we buy. So, of course, um, uh, in Luzon, having two crops um, for everyone's uh, appreciation, we would. It's not uh, a casting stone number, uh, but majority of 
uh, the corn we buy during the, the, the peak summer season, the March-April season. So we try to buy up to 75% of our full year requirement. Mainly because um, it's not about volume again. Uh, the wet crop for us, uh, we think these are the grade 3, grade 4 uh, corn. So we only buy minimal. So uh, when we talk of uh, uh, ways where we can uh, improve the uh, quantity of corn, let's also uh, look in um, ways wherein we can improve the quality. And good thing for Mindanao, uh, yung crop, uh, tarays a year daw. So we have the luxury to buy um, uh, monthly and we have the luxury uh, to not store so uh, long yung uh, usage requirements namin. And of course, uh, on my last slide, uh, second to the last, I would say. So I gave you an overview of uh, uh, the quality of corn we need. Uh, packaging, or I would say the material handling, uh, our material handling requirements. And then yung third, uh, our challenge, I would say, on uh, the, the supplier mix having uh, a good supplier mix. So uh, uh, in summary, on quality, of course, uh, we mentioned yung wet crop, hindi ganun kaganda yung quality ng corn. Uh, these are um, harvest which are prone to mycotoxin. Uh, mycotoxin, why is this something very important for us? So it's something that's uh, uh, correlated to yeast and molds. Um, and uh, why mycotoxin is something we really scrutinize. Uh, these are something that can cause uh, impact neg uh, negatively impact your species. Uh, it's something that uh, in, in impacts uh, feed intake, uh, reproduction. Uh, some mycotoxins are carcinogenic in nature or car uh, cancerous, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a lot uh, about mycotoxin that uh, uh, we don't want. And of course, um, uh, impurities is something uh, we also look at uh, uh, when we buy. Uh, these are things that can impact our uh, feed quality. Uh, these are things that can impact uh, as well our equipments uh, to some extent. So it's something we also wanted to address uh, moving forward. And of course, uh, because of this, um, um, yung quality hindi pare-pareho over the months. Um, long storage uh, is uh, an industry practice right now. And uh, in the long run, uh, infestation is uh, uh, also becoming a risk. That's why uh, if you will ask us uh, what will be our recommendation, of course, these are uh, recommendations uh, uh, we formulated given the, our interaction with uh, uh, farmers, uh, with uh, processors. So, of course, uh, it would be good to have uh, more of the post-drying uh, equipments. Uh, or post-drying facilities, uh, particularly to the, the key cluster producing uh, areas. Uh, with this uh, first bullet, of course, uh, uh, our expectation is that um, we will be able to reduce, if not eliminate, uh, impurities later on. And then um, on the context of uh, farmer training, uh, adoption or standardization of uh, best practices in uh, drying. So uh, others uh, they dry using uh, they, they they dry with cob. Uh, others they shell it first and then uh, dry the grain. Uh, for some reason, magkaiba yung uh, quality output of the two practices. So uh, of course, um, with the help of our uh, experts, hopefully this is something we can uh, standardize and address. Uh, and of course. Um, uh, a publication of a good uh, warehousing storage uh, uh, practices as well later on. And then on uh, packaging, uh, material handling, I would say, um, uh, there's also very little practice on um, uh, silos, on bulk handling, uh, which uh, we also uh, think uh, can generate uh, efficiencies and uh, uh, savings uh, later on. 
savings for us as processor and probably savings to the growing sector uh, moving forward. Um, what else? So the context of uh, sourcing, as much as we want to uh, touch base with the 1.3 million farmers uh, mentioned by uh, Doc Damo, uh, our limitation uh, are generally driven by uh, their uh, lack of uh, um, requirements, the, non, the mandatory requirements, the lack of receipt, uh, BIR, TIN, uh, uh, TIN uh, number, so on and so forth. So uh, this is where the traders usually uh, come into play uh, when dealing with end, uh, end users because these are something unavailable uh, to farmer. They, they're also, also clamoring on funding concerns. So uh, we think this is uh, something that can be uh, addressed through uh, financing, access to bank services, and of course, not just access, but hopefully uh, is in lending uh, moving forward. And of course, uh, something that uh, is very important for us as a, a end user uh, visibility on uh, government programs uh, that would address not just uh, quantity but quality as well. Uh, with uh, the number of farmers we have, um, an access or link uh, to the key players. Uh, and of course, um, uh, a timely availability of uh, uh, supply and demand data. So uh, this is something that can uh, impact how we uh, uh, forecast uh, uh, both uh, corn prices and uh, the volumes we uh, procure. With that, um, in case uh, anybody is interested, uh, this is, uh, I believe, my deck is something that will be shared by uh, Amy uh, and the rest of the committee. So um, I'll be happy to share my data. Uh, Ms. Rosemary Cruz data and of course our corporate affairs, uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Ilagan in case you have uh, questions, uh, clarifications and uh, in case you, you wanted to, to have a separate meeting on how uh, uh, we can maximize uh, this initiative. All right. That's uh, it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Jason, for sharing with us the initiatives and, of course, also the requirements of Cargill for your sustainability in uh, corn supply. And I see some questions directed to Jason, but these questions will be parked for now. And we will ask him along with his team from Cargill to respond to them later. Okay, um, our next speaker came from the private sector as well. Uh, Katrina or Kat Kat Mercado is the Corporate Social Responsibility Supervisor of Filmico Foods Corporation based in Iligan City. Uh, she has more than seven, ye seven years of experience both for corporate social responsibility as well as in children's rights protection. Uh, she earned her social work degree in Mindanao State University in Marawi and her Master of Teaching in Social Work in Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. Over to you, Kat Kat. Hello, good afternoon to, um, to Sir Damo of um, BA and to my fellow panelists. So um, I would be discussing with you our project field, which is our yellow, our yellow core inclusive sourcing. So next slide, next slide. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, for a brief background, no. so Permico Food Corporation is the um, agribusiness subsidiary of Abaiti Secretary Ventures. Permico Food Corporation has, um, has a plant in Niligan, while in Tarlac, we have the Permico Animal Nutrition. So we operate in the Philippines nationwide and have a, have a growing international presence in the Asia Pacific region through Gold Story. Due to our brand promise of being partners for growth, we advance our business and communities by providing business solutions and building partnerships for growth. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. So for project field, this is what we, uh, our project is um, Term, no. This is the agribusiness program directly sourcing corn, 
from local farmer cooperatives and associations, which will serve a portion. Okay, you can barely hear me. Okay. Okay. For the project silk, no, this is an agribusiness program directly sourcing corn from yellow corn farmers, cooperatives, and associations, which will serve a portion of our um, Pilmico corn requirement. This is a shared value project with Abaitis Foundation. This is a corporate foundation of the Abaitis Equity Ventures, which aims to provide series of trainings focused on organizational development, enhancement of knowledge and skills, and provision of a livelihood project to augment income of the organization. Next slide, please. So for our project timeline, no. so we started the, the project in 2017. So we started with one cooperative, which is the Montevigo Agrarian Reform. And if you would notice in our project timeline, we started with trial deliveries. So from the 2018th, we added, we were able to tap another, another group. This is the association from Marawi Balui. So we started also with a trial delivery from them. After we were done trial delivery with Mantibugao, we were able to sign, sign and seal the partnership through EMOA. And then we continuously bought their yellow corn and then conducted series of empowerment training. As well as with Marawi Malino, because they will start as an organization. These, these were the IDPs from Marawi Siege. When they were displaced from Marawi, they decided to form their session to an association. And then timingly, they decided to, because of the fundings that they were they were um, given from various sectors, they decided to put to put themselves into an association and then plant yellow corn, which would be serving Pilmico, but a portion of it lang. So we, we were also given, uh, we were also able to provide them years of capacity buildings and organizational development. By 2019, aside from our from Mara, from Antibugao and the Marawi Balui farmers, we were also able to tap another cooperative from um, Iligan City, the Hindang Banana Farmers Multipurpose Cooperative, and one from Luzon. This is the Pindangan Two Primary Multipurpose Cooperative in Pindangan Tarlac. By 2020, um, we were able to sign and seal a partnerships with these associations and cooperatives and then continuously buying their yellow corn and continu continuously assisting them. Next slide, please. Okay, for our process, should you want to be uh, to become our supplier, our, for our partner, um, we highly encourage you to um, accredit yourselves as our, as our supplier through, the, through Evalua. This is our online platform. Um, second step to that is you register on that platform and then after approval, we then ask you to send us a um, few kilograms of your, of your yellow corn for trial purposes and for um, quality checking. This is just um, six of the 13 parameters that we are looking at. Uh, along with Cargill, no, medyo madami silang parameters na chinecheck. Pilmico also has a lot of parameters to be checked um, from time to time and um, every delivery of our yellow corn farmers. This is to ensure the quality of foods that we are producing because the foods that we then be processed into animal, um, animal feeds no? and then for human consumption, yung mga animals na kumakain ng feeds namin. After that, uh, we will then have a trial delivery. And then after the trial delivery is approved, we will then proceed with the MOA signing with the association or the cooperative. In our MOA signing, this includes not just the buying of a yellow corn, but uh, the support that we are extending to cooperatives and associations. Next slide, please. Okay, this is our Evalua. This is a digital platform of um, Miko, which we are using. We highly encourage our suppliers to adapt with the digitization. And then um, we also conduct them a series of trainings how to become familiar with our system because this is where we base our um, overall transactions. And then we highly abide with um, the, we highly, we, we highly abide with the um, timings and schedules that that has been set and discussed and approved by all parties. Next question, next slide please. Katulad ng si Cargill, no, um, he was uh, he shared with us that they have difficulty with suppliers or cooperatives 
who does not have complete BIR substantiation documents. Along with Bilmico, also with Bilmico, as um, I have shared here, you know, this is our supplier requirements. We highly encourage our cooperatives and associations to, to really get or um, um, to really get and have themselves enrolled sa BIR, have themselves have um, a business permits or registered under SEC, a DTI or CDA, and then have themselves a complete compliant BIR receipts. Because dito means nagkakatalo-talo, for example, they have um, sales invoice, but they do not have the, the corresponding secondary um, receipt to that, which is the, 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 um, which is the official receipt or the collection receipt. Kasi minsan, uh, this is where we, what we really explain to the, to the cooperatives and associations, no? Kapag meron lang silang isang invoice and then walang katumbas na, in, na receipt yon when they get the money from the banks. Because in Pilmico, we pay our suppliers through, um, through, through our bank, no? Kapag hindi kasi sila nagkaroon na, for example, collection receipt or the official receipt, we always explain to them that they will be taxed um, doubled. At the double yung um, tax na nakukuha nila kasi nagre-reflect sa mga libro nila na they were able to transact twice of that um, instance, twice of that one, one delivery of yellow corn. So next slide, please. Okay, for, um, for our Luzon, um, Luzon plant, no? uh, our partner cooperatives um, deliver to Santo Domingo to Kapa Starlac. So also with, um, next slide, please, also with Iligan, we encourage everyone and then um, we really ask them to deliver to our plants. The one in Luzon is in Capas and the one in Iligan is in Kiwalan Cove, the Lipuga, Iligan City. So this is um, more or less um, five hour drive from Bukidnon. B Bukidnon being one of the, from Sir Damo's presentation kanina, no? because Bukidnon one of the um, highest, um, highest um, producer. Next slide, please. Okay, um, I would like to share with you about the, uh, the challenges encountered of Pilmico Foods Corporation and Avoitis Foundation when we were conducting or we were implementing our project SILK. Next slide, please. Okay, what really irks our customers, our partners, our cooperatives and associations is the long queue of delivery, long queue of trucks, um, and loading specifically of the raw material, no? Sa, sa planta kasi ng iligan, um, nagkakataon minsan sa isang araw, hindi lang yellow corn yung nag-deliver. When, when you have a feed mill, you have a lot of raw materials that needs to be delivered or that needs to be um, added sa, 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 iyohang, sa, sa, imo, sa iyong manufacture, sa iyong process. So along with yellow corn, sometimes nakakasabay nila ang raw materials such as um, molasses, um, mga... Uh, also, we have um, cor copra cakes and the others. So, minsan hindi maiwasan na mahaba talaga yung ano nila, mahaba yung, or matagal nakakapag unload yung ami mga partners. So, that's one of the challenges that we have encountered and, and is being looked at by the company on how we can properly address it. Para hindi naman sila malugi, because we understand that most of these um, organized groups, the cooperatives and associations, they sometimes just rent out their vehicles. Hindi pa sa kanila yung truck, they rent it out with an LGU or a private sector also, and then they're being um, paid, they, they paid to that um, owner on an hourly basis. Sometimes kapag overnight, syempre, dagdag bayad pa sa trucker and then the pahinante. And then the second challenge that we encountered is that um, most cooperative, uh, most um, feed millers, na specifically in Luzon, they have classifiers. So when we say classifiers, someone from the feed mill, in, someone from the feed mill goes to the cooperative, literally and physically checks the status of the yellow corn, and then if it's okay, they have it delivered na kaagad to the to the feed uh, to the feed mill plant. And then um, sometimes also. Um, the mga feed meal companies, they themselves pick up yellow corn from the co cooperatives um, locations. Where in Sipilmico, unfortunately, we do not have that capacity and um, um, we're, we're limited to that. So um, next slide, please. Okay. So this, um, I would like to iter reiterate, no? Um, most organ, uh, most cooperatives and associations um, do not have complete receipts, complete BIR substantiation receipts. So they res they resort to kabilaan. 
when we say kabilaan pag pag nag-deliver sila ng corn automatically the feed mill in the, the feed miller pays them in cash so that's um one of the practices also in in few areas here in um in the Philippines. However, for, for Pilmico, we really um, recommend or oblige our, our partners to have themselves enrolled in our system, which is the Evaluano. So we have we ask really documents to that like the BIR um BIR registration BIR registration, um, complete the BIR receipts. You have the secondary and the primary receipts for them to do business well with us. And at the same time, this opens door for them to also do business with other, um, with other um, buyers of yellow corn. Um, we've had instances kasi na we were delivered with tons of yellow corn. However, when we did the quality checking, most of the delivered, most of the truckload did not pass our quality testing. So um, that incident also opened doors for them to to sell it to a trader na who accepts um um not not the stand, who accepts um the not not rejected ha pero who accepts um not not the standards of filmico na kasi our, the filmico standards is kind of strict so that trader was was able to accept the rejected corn from filmico in the end the cooperative did not go home zero so he was also able he was at the same time able to to sell his yellow corn not only to not not to pilmico but to someone else so next slide please okay so this is it now so um one of the um, recurring talaga na challenges ni so because we wanted to really have um yellow golden yellow golden yellow corns now so we've had instances now very uh, low yung quality aflatoxin um si sir was mentioning uh, parts per billion no kanila aflatoxin filmico also has standards as to that no so they they kind of related so um there was an instance na lahat ng deliveries of one specific group bagsak siya sa quality so we had to go back to the area we had to talk with the station discuss with them What's the parameters that we're looking at? Um, ano yung mga nag, we we had a trail, um, look back trail. No, kung what happened? Ani nang anong ginawa nila sa process nila na, na after harvesting? After harvesting, where did they store? How they how they dried? Um, paano nila sinaking? Um, we were able then to trace na um, madaming instances, madaming instances na nakapag um, they they deviated from the good manufacturing and the good plant. Um, the um, the good agricultural practices sana no but then and that resulted to um to a low standard na yellow corn so when we have an we when we have yellow corns that does not pass our quality standards we go back to the cooperative or the association and discuss na ito yung parameters kusan kay bagsak um please also look at your practices kung paano ninyo siya ma-adjust para hindi kayo ulit magkaroon ng um, low quality of yellow corns so um, next slide, please. Okay. So um, as well as um, this one, also let me um, the, um, discuss this further. In our practice of buying yellow corns from cooperatives and um, associations, because um, most of them are farmers not from from at the start, no, um, and then their fathers, their families, their uncles, their mothers were, were also farmers. And then they grew up being as farmers. Um, you can say na expert sila, expert talaga sila when it comes to planting yellow corn, expert sila in looking at um, uh, pagtingin lang ng weather, oh, this is the, the right time to plant, and uh, this is the um, the right wind to plant, may parating na ulan, this is the right time to plant. However, um, pag sa post-harvest facilities na, minsan dito na nagkakatalo-talo, kasi um, hindi lahat ng cooperatives namin has the capacity and the capability to um, provide themselves post-harvest facilities for example, etong corn shellers natin, and then um, etong bubble solar dryer. Um, these facilities, sana will would, would enhance the quality of yellow corn that they would they can sell not just to Pilmico but also to um, corn ye yellow corn buyers. No, um, there are instances kasi na sobrang gana ng yellow corn, but then if you're gonna ask if um, how the corn was stored, how the corn was dried, you will um, see na hindi maganda sana yung corn when it was harvested but then the way it was stored the way it was dried um, not so good and, and then um, 
uh, when it is time now to sell it, you will see now traces of aflatoxin, you will see traces of um, um, na mga beetle bugs na sila, and then you will see traces of molds na talaga. So next slide, please. Hi, Kat. Yeah. Uh, may uh, I yes. request to, yeah, to wrap up the presentation? Thank you. Okay, so welcome. Thank you. So, okay, so um, so um, from coming from Filmico, no, so um, the opportunity that we were uh, we were able to see um, with the pandemic in hand is that um, there is a collaboration to help um, farmers by endorsing them by endorsing the, the utilization of local corns, and um, kasi uh, pan timing na nag harvest no, so really a great time for um, corns um, corn millers, um, feed millers to really buy yellow corn from the um, local farmers and then um uh okay and then also for you uh, know so for post harvest facilities um although we have we have a partnership with card bank now so most our most of our um yellow, uh, most of our partners has access to financial assistance um but it, it would not suffice because you have a lot of equipment to invest. You have um, kung pwedeng asana si bigyan sila ng silos, magandang um, dryer facility, hindi itong solar dryer because um, very prone to infestation. If um, all stakeholders siguro no, will help um, associations, cooperatives to really adapt the cooperatives into with techno proper technologies, um, post-harvest facilities, and adapt them with um, the latest technologies on corn farming and post-harvest farming. And Sigur, so um, I think that sums up my, uh, no, my um, presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Kat Kat, for, for that presentation and for sharing with us your uh, efforts in sourcing directly to our smallholder farmers. Um, again, if you have questions for Kat Kat, you may type them in the Q&A box uh, for proper recognition of uh, your questions. Um, okay, uh, we heard from the government and the private sector. Now we want to hear from the farmer group. Uh, our next speaker is the chairman of Mantibugao Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries Farmers Cooperative. Uh, it is one of the largest farmer cooperatives and consolidators in Northern Mindanao, specifically located in Manolo Fortich in Bukidnon. Mantibugao ARB uh, Farmers Cooperative is primarily engaged in corn and cassava production and, ad and other value-adding activities and one of the long-standing project implementers of the Department of Agriculture uh, since its establishment in 1991. It is also one of the engaged co-op of Northern, Northern Mindanao's Convergence on Value Chain Enhancement for Rural Growth and Empowerment Project for or Project Converge, a six-year project funded by the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Uh, maraming salamat po, sir, sa pag sa aming invitation and with the help of the Department of Agriculture Region 10 Corn Program, I am now giving the floor to you. Hi, sir. Sir, nakamute. Sir, nakamute po kayo. Yeah. Salamat po. Uh, si Maraming hapon po. Magandang hapon po, sir. Kung masabi ko lang po tungkol po sa call po namin, uh, mar uh, marang nagkapasalamat po kami sa DE, pangalawa po sa El uh, Mico, pagkat eh, tinulungan kami na ay binta namin yung ano namin yung mga mais namin uh, yung experience namin sir uh, mayroon kaming facilities mayroon kaming cab dryer mayroon din kami shelter saka yung DE din namin sa region ay nag uh, nagkaroon din kami ng ang muwa para magkaroon kami ng uh, agreement sa Filmico para doon doon namin ibinta yung mga yung mais namin. Saka marami din kami natutulungan na cooperatives halimbawa doon sa Pasugong at saka sa Carlos 
kaso lang, limitado lang yung capacity namin. Uh, may time na hindi uh, hindi namin tinanggap yung mais nila kasi uh, puno na yung budiga namin. Saka hindi rin tuloy-tuloy yung yung delivery namin sa Filmico dahil nga sa puno din yung planta nila. Sa ngayon, sir, uh, yung deliveries namin is hindi talaga regular na ang tawag dito yung weekly. So minsan may may time na walang deliver kay within, within the week, this week. Wala. So mayroon ding isa. Saka mayroon ding dalawa. So yun lang ang ano namin sir na kung halimbawa mas marami yung matutulungan namin na farmer kung magkaroon tayo ng uh, yung parabang uh, delivery na yung halimbawa ipalagay natin na three times a week o twice a week para makita namin yung volume. Kung halimbawa sa ngayon mayroon kaming mga 250 tons so, for delivery na yan. Uh, kaso lang itong nakaraang linggo wala kaming delivery so ngayon mayroong isa ngayon pang, pang bukas yan so ang inaano na namin sir yung para makatulong kami sa farmers kung sa ibang co-op uh, yung kapasidad kasi na namin sa co-op is limitado lang uh, yun lang at saka kung halimbawa para matulungan natin yung mga ibang farmers ah uh, Ma, mataas na ano kasi yung dami kasi yung factor niyan halimbawa uh, tama yung sinabi ni Ma'am Prat na yung mga ibang association o ang ibang ibang cooperative is walang BIR so yun ang mahirap at saka wala din silang facilities so kung halimbawa si si Fidmail is hindi hindi talaga mabibigay ng PO doon sa mga association o cooperatives na walang facilities dahil hindi naman sila makaproduce ng good quality na grains. Ang yung sa atin naman mayroon tayong ganyan kaso lang limitado. So kung uh, ilang tons lang yung maipalabas natin bawat araw. Saka ang nangyari ngayon uh, ito pong uh, yung payment namin yun lang, medyo uh, 15 days. So, si farmers ngayon, pag halimbawa, pag deliver sa, sa farmers doon sa, sa amin, ang nangyari, uh, umaabot na ng 20 days, pero yung, yung product nila ay hindi pa nadadala doon sa filmiko. So, yun ang medyo, kumbaga, tapal, tapal ang nangyayari. Ayan. Um, ka Antonio, tapos na po ba ang inyong um, sharing? Uh, uh, sige po. Sige po. <laughs> Maraming uh, sige po. Uh, 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 yes po. Uh, 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 ang ano namin sir, uh, sa, kung tutusin natin, siguro 20% lang po sa farmers na ma-accommodate namin Uh, hmm. ano naman yung nasa 80% na hindi namin makumulit kaya limitado yung capacity namin. Hmm. So, ang yung sa amin naman, uh, PD, kung mayroon naman tayong iba na mga, alimbawa, ito si Cargill kanina, yung yung mixture content nila is protein. So, mayroon talagang farmers na nagde-deliver ng protein. So, hmm. ang ginagawa namin, para bang Uh, nire-reject namin hindi sa ano dahil hindi pwede sa filmi ko kaya pag sinasabi namin oh, ito yung sako ito yung ano natin 55 kilos per bag din bawal ang sako ng abuno tas 13% ang MC below mm -hmm. so si farmer kayo halimbawa nagdadala ng product nila pag MC namin nako 13.9 o 14 so mm -hmm. sasabihin namin hindi pwede ito sa filmi ko kaya ang 
inaano namin ngayon, sir, sana mayroong, halimbawa si Cargill, sana mayroon din kami na Chris doon or si CJ ba yung nasa Manolo na kung baga, pag halimbawa si Farmer is 14% yung yung MC sa kanilang mais, doon namin ibibigay. So pag halimbawa ito is 13 below, uh, ito, papilmi ko ito. Ito pang ano ito. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Parang yes ganun, po. sir. Yes po. Okay po, um, narinig po kayo ng ating uh, speakers from Cargill and Filmico. And I'm sure uh, different organizations din po na present sa ating webinar ngayon na narinig din po kayo. And of course, the PPSA, uh, we hear you po uh, of your issues and challenges. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ka Antonio, for sharing with us your uh, experience. Yes, po. And I also want to mention the help of the Department of Agriculture yes, sir. in, in Region. Yes, po. In Region 10, headed by Director Carlene Colliado and uh, supported by uh, Juri Lachica for helping us coordinating the connection for uh, the Mantibugao ARB Cooperative. Okay, maraming salamat po. Uh, now we will move to the moderated discussion. Um, unfortunately, this will be just a short discussion as we are short of the time. Uh, may I invite our speakers, uh, Kat, Jason, and Ka Antonio to uh, answer some of the questions posted by our participants. And I think one of the first questions is directed to Kat and Jason. Uh, the question is, how is the price dictated and or how do you uh, set the buying prices for corn? Um, okay. Okay, so, okay. For for Pilmico, no, the, the the basis of our of our pricing is really the, the current market price set um in the commercial market. So that's where we get our prices. How about for Jason? Sorry, time's on it. For Cargill, um it's the same. Uh, week on week, uh, we look at the market prices, how it evolves. But uh, on the context of price, of course, it's all relative to the terms agreed with uh, uh, the seller. Uh, it's also relative to uh, the premiums we have to pay if uh, Cargill has uh, uh, specific uh, non-industry requirements. And uh, of course, it's uh, relative to where uh, the corn will be delivered. So iba iba po per area, but bottom line, uh, we pa follow um, yung uh, market uh, prices for that area, um, and we pay a premium if in case uh, the seller has to abide by some uh, Cargill specific uh, parameters, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, the prices will also be impacted by the terms uh, uh, agreed by both uh, Cargill and the seller. The likes of uh, payment terms, uh, what else? The likes of uh, whether it's bag or in box, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, for Ka Antonio, ano po yung uh, experience nyo po sa, uh, sa selling price naman po? For... Sa ceiling price po sir, yung yes, base po. po lang po sa ano namin, sa Filmico, uh, what is the prevailing price po doon sa amin plus 1 piso for the tracking. Mm -hmm. So halimbawa, ang buying doon sa amin is nasa 13. So yung iba pa sa namin na price is nasa 14. Mm -hmm. Plus 1 piso for tracking. And delivery for delivery. Mm -hmm. Yun ang cost, costing sa tracking. Yun lang po ang dinadagdag nila. Halimbawa is mayroon tayong 13 pesos doon sa Manolo. Mm -hmm. So, ang ibibigay nila na price yan sa amin, uh, 14 or 14.50. Yung 70 centavos din is for the tracking. Mm -hmm. Okay po. Uh, maraming salamat po, uh, Ka Antonio. Unfortunately po, uh, ayun lang po yung questions for our uh, from our participants. And I think there are questions directed to uh, Pilmico and Cargill in the Q&A box that uh, Kat Kat and Jason may want to uh, answer. Uh, thank you so much po to all, to all our speakers for responding to the questions and to our participants for making this session uh, rich in discussion uh, through your questions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ami. Again, we would like to thank our speakers, Doc Damo from the A National Corn Program. 
Cut Cut from Filmico, Jason from Cargill with her colleagues Chris and Mayeth, uh, and Ka Antonio of Mantibugao ARB Farmers Cooperative uh, for your valuable insights and sharing. Uh, we hope to stay in touch and continue our discussions and hopefully collaborations. Um, we would also like to thank our participants for their set, for their questions and, of course, active participation today. Uh, lastly, before we close, we would like to invite you to the succeeding webinars of this PPSA Working Groups Learning Series. The next topic is on fruits, both high value and underutilized. So if you have recommended uh, private sector to speak during the session, kindly let us know. Uh, also, please anticipate the release of further webinar announcements. Again, thank you very much, and we hope to see you all in our next webinars. Keep safe, everyone. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Po. If you have other questions, just feel free to send it to us through email, and we will, of course, send it to our speakers or respond to you directly. Thank you.